Hi everybody, I'm Roland from Roland and Riches and there's great improv everywhere. We're gonna take a look at an example, we're gonna break it down and see what we can learn from it. Today's video is a team out of Salt Lake City, Utah called Murder Fairy and Arson Leprechaun. That's Michael and Jesse and they put on this great show where they give audience members a bell and a horn and assign rules to each one. Now I'm about to show you two six second clips that take place in the same scene. One of the rules is that they'll swap characters and that's going to happen between the clips but it's the same scene. Alright, let's take a quick look and come right back. You think you're just because you're my brother, I won't kill you. I killed a whole pile of family members. <laughs> Only family members old enough to drive are dead in a pile. <laughs> okay, this is great. Information that came out in the first clip, a pile of dead family members, gets reused a half a minute later in the scene. Now, in this case, both lines are said by the same player, different character, because of the swapping that happens. The reason I love this so much is because we're often taught to really listen to your partner and use what they give you. And I've seen a lot of students take this to heart, which is so great, but they forget to listen to themselves. And just as what your partner says should be important to your character, what you say is also just as important. You know, sometimes we're so concerned about what our partner says and reacting to that, that we actually don't hear what we said and we forget the useful details we just gave. In this case, when Jesse mentions the pile of dead family members, he uses his own information in the second clip. That's great. Remember to listen to yourself. Okay, moving on. It's a beastly thing. It is. It's killed many a townsman. It has. <laughs> We're the only ones left. Yeah. Okay, so that's a really short clip, but did you catch it? In those seven seconds, they created a fun little pattern. Listen again. Now, the bell that the audience member rings might be covering up the last word, but Michael says, we are. It's a beastly thing. It is. It's killed many a townsman. It has. <laughs> We're the only ones left. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a small moment, but so much fun. Okay, personally, I like to think that anything can become a pattern. You just have to do it again. Did I say it again? You just have to do it again. In this case, it's a pronoun small verb pattern, and it's great. I do think though that it takes a little bit of awareness, like having part of your brain paying attention to your partner, reacting in the moment, but the other part of your brain going, huh, I just answered what he said with two words. I think I'm gonna do that again. And once you have that awareness, you get to decide. Is that how the character always speaks in the scene? Or maybe it's an interlude, like after he answers three times that way, he speaks normal for a while, and then when the moment is right, goes back to answering in just those two small words. You can also play with the audience's expectation of the pattern. Obviously, you don't want the pattern to be the scene. You still wanna have a relationship and go with the flow of where the scene takes you, but now it's something you can insert at any time and follow for a while. And Michael made it happen just by being aware of what he was doing and repeating what he did. Anything you find interesting can become a pattern. All right, let's see what's next. I love, I love the way you talk and the way you just, every, every you, <laughs> you're searching for a compliment and it's taking too long. <laughs> okay, I laughed so hard when I saw this the first time. All right, so Michael's character is having trouble finding their words. Now, I don't know if Michael himself was having a problem figuring out what he wanted to say or if it was the character and really it doesn't matter. The result was those stammering sentences. And all Jesse did was call it out. And calling it out isn't something you see in any other performing art. I mean, if you've ever seen it in TV, it was most likely a blooper. But on stage, it becomes this really powerful moment because the audience, they're seeing what's happening and they're in on it. So when you point out what is actually happening on stage, it releases some of that tension and becomes this fun, real moment that the players and audience get to share together. Now, notice that in this example, Jesse doesn't call it out as himself. He does it as the character, not the player. And he doesn't do it with a mean attitude. He's not trying to make his partner look bad. He's just taking what his partner is doing, in this case, not finishing his sentences and stammering, and label it as something the character is doing, and then telling the audience what that is. All right, let's take a look at another short clip that takes place at a weird birthday party. <laughs> Eat the cake. <laughs> Can I blow up the candles first? No! <laughs> it's very dark in this room. How else am I going to see you eat it? <laughs> yeah, such a fun scene. All right, so in this scene, we see a couple of things that we're often taught not to do in improv. Michael asks a question, and Jesse says no. And there's good reason that beginning students are taught to avoid these things. 
For example, a no can stop the energy of a scene or make your partner think you didn't like their choice. It can also take away from yes and, which is something that we try and do. But like any lesson in improv or anything else, there's always exceptions. Now, Michael asks if he can blow out the candles first, and this works because it's coming directly from the personality and attitude of the character. Listen again to how he asks the question. Can I blow out the candles first? It's dejected, almost crying, and so the question has a reason. It stems from him whining about his birthday. It's not a question being asked because Michael, the improviser, is afraid to make a choice. It's a question being asked because the character is whiny. And Jesse's no works because of how he follows it up. He doesn't say no and then just moves on with his life. He says no and follows it up with a because. It's very dark in this room. How else am I going to see you eat it? <laughs> it's the because that makes it work. With a no, you have to either give in or you have to fight. And a yes, no fight isn't fun to watch on stage. By giving a because, you're giving the underlying reason for the no. And that, that you can do something about. Like Michael's character could turn on a light or get up and open the curtains, which then gives us something new to follow in the scene. All right, speaking of that birthday cake scene, let's go back and watch how we discover that it's a birthday party. Now, as you watch this 30 second clip at the beginning of that same scene, watch how small details are added over time. It's only by the end of it that we know it's a birthday party. Try it. I, I, Try it. I worked hard, it's tough to bake. <laughs> Eat it. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, it's good. I, it's cake. You like cake. <laughs> Fucking birthday, eat it! <laughs> this is so good. See, we don't have to throw everything out there with the first line of a scene. All Jesse had were those two words, try it, and the way he said it, his attitude. A moment later, he adds that it was tough to bake. Then he sees Michael kind of pick up the food and eat it with that same whiny attitude we saw, and that's what inspires him to say, it's cake, you like cake. And then since it's cake, he realizes, well, of course, it's your birthday, eat it. And all of that done with the same attitude that Jesse had when he started the scene when he said try it. This is a nice slow scene with different details getting layered on over time as the improvisers themselves discovered what's actually happening in the scene. Now not all scenes have to be like this, but allow yourself the freedom to take your time and peel back the layers of the scene to discover what's going on. It's fun to watch and fun to do. Okay, last clip I want to look at is that age-old improv question of do I pull the trigger or not? Go on, try it! Just, just push any button. Any button! <laughs> <laughs> well, in this case, it's not a gun, but a button. But it's the same question. Should he push it or not? Let's skip to the end of the scene to see what they do. Hey! <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Now there is no right or wrong answer, and frankly, I could do a whole video just on this topic, but for this scene, pulling that trigger, pushing that button, is a great choice. The audience actually sees them toy with the idea of pushing that button a few times, and at some point, that buildup is just not as fun as seeing what's on the other side of pushing the button. And if they had let it go back and forth some more, the audience would have been let down no matter what happens after the button is pushed. Michael and Jesse toyed with it just the right amount, and then gave the audience a small comical ending that everybody loved. All right, though there's Eclipse, let's do a little recap. Listen to yourself. We spend a lot of time working to focus on our scene partners and really listen to what they're doing and saying, and I don't want to take anything away from that because that's important. But also, make sure you're paying attention to what you're saying and what you're doing. When you say a line, consider it information you can reuse. And when you say something in a certain attitude, Ask yourself why your character feels that way about what you just said. In addition to your partners doing it, you too are creating fuel for the scene. So listen to yourself. Anything can be a pattern. I mean, we saw how easily Michael turned a two-word sentence into this fun pattern. Look for those moments where something you did or said might be fun to do again. Call out what's happening on stage. Now, this isn't about breaking the fourth wall, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, here's what's happening on stage. But having this tool on your tool belt can sometimes give you a really fun moment with the audience. If you give a no, it helps to add a because. A yes, no, back and forth fight, this is no fun for the players on stage and definitely no fun for the audience. So if you find that you've given a no, don't end it there. Give a reason why you said no. When you do, your partner can now respond to the reason and not just stand there fighting the no. Give yourself the freedom to slowly discover. We saw how it took 30 seconds for Michael and Jesse to realize they were actually in a birthday party. 
It was engaging and didn't feel slow. During those 30 seconds, they peeled back these layers, adding details that over time painted the full picture of, oh yeah, we're having a birthday party. Again, you may not want to do every scene this way, but if your team has space for this type of scene in your show, give yourself the freedom to slowly discover. And finally, the buildup isn't always as exciting as pulling the trigger and see what happens next. So sometimes you have to pull that trigger. And that's our recap for the show. So what do you think about these lessons that we pulled from these scenes? Do they make sense? Do you have any questions on them? If so, comment down below. And if you disagree with something I said, let me know. Remember, improv isn't just technique. It's also an art form. So I expect people to approach improv differently. So take what works for you. And if it doesn't, no worries. But let me know so I can learn how you'd approach it. All right, I want to thank Michael and Jesse. That's Murder Fairy and Arson Leprechaun. I love that name. You can find their links below as well as the link to their original show so you can watch the whole thing. They also did an encore at the same festival. I went ahead and added that link as well so you can check that one out too. And if you're on a team and you've got a show that you want to share, my email is also below. Email me and let me know. There's great improv everywhere, and I would love to show the world how great your improv is. All right, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Bye. I want to wait for my friends to come. They're not coming. <laughs> <laughs>